everybody is an ambassador of our ocean. Everybody is an ambassador of our ecosystem. Everybody is an ambassador of our world. My name is Lena Hadsberg. I believe in the power of storytelling to connect us as individuals, but also to the world around us. And today we have quite a remarkable story. Um, Alex, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Alex Bellini from Italy. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. Alex, you're an eco-pioneer. You're an adventurer. When one goes in and looks at the places you've been to in the world that you've crossed two oceans in a rowing boat, that you've run more than 20,000 kilometers across the world's continents, um, amongst other extreme adventures that you've set and tasks that you've set yourself. Tell me why, why do you say, what is it that motivates you to set these goals that seem so beyond reachable? All my life I've been dreaming of being an adventurer and explorer. And by the age of 20, I couldn't feel my heart beating for, for the life I was facing ahead. And so I started wondering how I can make my life memorable. How can I make my life worth living? I basically started uh, planning my first adventure that was about uh, walking across uh, Alaska, pulling a sledge in, winter, in the winter time there was silence around me. And all of a sudden, I kind of realized that there was something special I can, I can reach in life. So I knew that the, the, the way I can connect myself was through adventures and through exploration. And while I was walking alone across Alaska, I had this kind of dream, an obsession for, uh, for rowing across an ocean. My background is from the mountains. I'm a mountaineer, I'm a mountain boy. I'm not a, an ocean boy, I've never been in the ocean before. So at first I, I welcomed the, this, the, this idea of rowing across an ocean as a, a crazy thought. And so I set this goal and in 2004, I made my first attempt of rowing across the ocean, which failed up after roughly six hours of uh, attempt. I made a second attempt, which failed 23 days later. I wanted to try again. And so in 2005, I set off from Genova for the third time and I eventually succeeded reaching Brazil after seven months and a half in Fortaleza. As founder of Clean Wave, which is an organization that's trying to tackle the plastic situation in the, across the Balearic Islands, um, it was with great interest that we saw this mission you've set yourself to travel the world's most polluted rivers, um, the ocean. And I spent some time looking at your videos and the, the rivers you've traveled so far. And uh, one interesting comment that I picked up was some point uh, you said something about how we take care of our home, but that our home is not just the four walls that we live in. It's, it's the sea, it's the mountains, it's the trees, it's the soil. Um, and that sense of, of the interconnectedness and maybe, maybe in this time where we are all in our homes, we need to, it's about thinking broader, you know, looking, looking beyond these four walls and saying, what is this world that we've created? Right now I am, um working uh, on a project called 10 Rivers, One Ocean that uh, aim to um, navigate the 10 most plastic polluted rivers in the world. 80% of the plastic polluting our ocean comes from uh, the rivers. But the problem is not the plastic. The problem is that we have exiled the nature from our consciousness. So we don't we no longer know what is good and bad for the nature. We no longer know what is good and bad for ourselves in the long term. And so this is why I decided to, uh, to take this challenge. The, the purpose is create an impact, creating awareness around a topic that we 
we no longer think there is someone else's problem. Raising awareness on the fact that it's our problem. If the Ganges or the Yanze or the, or the uh, Pearl River is polluted, is our problem, is my problem. Because soon rather than later, it will come to affect me. And I want to take as many people as possible in this journey, this journey of exploration, journey of knowledge, in order to awake human spirit and try to, to make sense of what is happening around us. Can you share with us a memory of rowing down the Ganges River that impacted you and will always stay with you? I have mixed feelings about Ganges. So on one hand, I was so surprised to see um, Indian people so warm in their soul and so willing to help. And the, the, the most beautiful memory I have this journey is uh, the building phase of my raft. Everything started off as one man, one Italian man, w with a multi-tool knife Try to make, try to build a boat, try to build a raft out of scrap materials. After a couple of hours of working alone, one man came out of nowhere, just one man came and helped me with a knot, to tie the knot. Something magic happened because after this first initial approach with this man, another man came and helped me with uh, fixing the rudder on the boat. And 15, no more than 20 minutes later, there were other eight people helping me out. So at the, at the end of the first day, it was me with other nine people or 10 people helping me out with the, with the raft. And that was the, uh, the, the sense of, wow, we are building a boat together. We are building a boat and we cannot even speak each other because we, we, we speak different languages. And that was the, the, the the, the most beautiful uh, moments of this, this long expedition. But as I said, I had a very mixed feelings because uh, after this initial, uh, initial good spirit, I started sailing down the, the Ganges and I had a different experience. Uh, Ganges is been, has been used for many, many thousands of years from Indians. And Ganges accompanies people in every single aspect of their life. From the morning, they do holy dips, they wash the clothes, they rinse the, hand, the, the, the mouth, they brush the teeth, uh, they wash the clothes, they put death body on the, in the water. So Ganges is part of the Indian culture. And one day I met a, a fisherman and while I was talking with this fisherman, I happened to see a, a dead um, a carcass of a, of a cow, a cow, a dead cow floating on the river. And I asked him, why nobody is picking up this dead body? Why nobody is caring about the dead cow floating in the river, smelling very badly, you know? And he said, well, you know, the Ganges is long, and someone down the river will take care of it. And guess what? Down the river, there was nobody. And this is a metaphor of our approach to nature. Hoping that someone will come and take care of us, hoping that someone will come up with a magic wand and with a solution for everybody. But the reality is that if we want to have something different in our world, we have personally go there and take it out from the water. In this conversation today, I feel as if I can't ignore the context in which we're having this conversation. That uh, yeah. I'm in my home, you're in your home, uh, we're not visiting our neighbours um, because we're in the midst of, of a, what, a global pandemic, but a, a completely new experience as, as a species on this planet. When I think and, and I look at your adventures, I look on your incredible trips, your what, 227 days out on the ocean on your own, I'm just wondering whether there perhaps are some lessons 
that from that time, from those moments of being alone, from having fear as a companion, some of the lessons from those times that can be brought into the lives of the people today who are many alone in their homes, um, many who are living with fear. And I'm just wondering whether you have some advice or, or something that you think you could translate into our situation today. Two months ago, coronavirus was something very far away from us because it was something located in China. And for some time, we believed that the problem was their problem. You know, coronavirus is something that Chinese have to deal with. Two months later, we are here. We are stranded in our house. I'm here not being able to, to travel to my next river to, to, you know, to sail on. You are there in the Baleari Island. And the perception of the risk now has changed. There is no one to blame for what we are living right now, but us. Because we are the crazy one, believing that we can separate human beings from the nature. We are the crazy one to blame that we have moved apart from, from the ecosystem. We are the crazy one not believing that there is uh, the principle of interconnectedness. So everything in nature is interconnected. Probably the, the most important lesson I've learned in, in my entire life is that we cannot control the situation around us, but we can control our reaction to what is happening. And that's the point, I think. If we want to learn something from this crisis, we have to learn the sense of interconnection between ecosystem and between human being and, and nature. We have to rediscover the courage to know that we can make a difference. Because when facing with such a, a big problem in our life, sometimes, it's, sometimes it takes courage to believe that one single man can make a difference. Because the problem is so huge, the ecological crisis is so huge, the plastic pollution is so huge that my effort as a human being worth nothing. But the courage to believe that we as a human, as a, as a single man or a single individual can make a, a difference, it takes a lot of courage. So we have to rediscover this courage because Greta Thunberg is, is just the perfect example. She is one, but she speaks as a million. And she speaks to million. There is no excuses. Everybody is an ambassador of our ocean. Everybody is an ambassador of our ecosystem. Everybody is an ambassador of our world.